So we all know that South Carolina's women's basketball team is going to be the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. But who would the Gamecocks like to play in their regional? You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Gamecock Nation, and welcome back to the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I'm Angel Lyon, the host of this podcast, and as always, you can find my written work over on Gamecock Digest on Fan Nation. Thank y'all so much for making the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast your first listen or watch for your team here today. We are free and available both on YouTube and wherever you get your audio podcasts daily. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now as new customers can join today and get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. We're talking even more basketball on this Friday edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. Lamont Pierce and the men's basketball team will be looking to get some payback against an old SEC foe that trounced them back in the regular season. We'll touch on that matchup later in the show. And also, a big announcement was made yesterday that didn't involve Lamont Paris's contract. It involved a current player who's set to return to the team next season. We'll talk about the impact that's going to have for Lamont Paris's squad as well. But we're going to start off by talking about Don Staley and the women's basketball team. And more specifically, who would they want to play in the NCAA tournament? Because as we all can say at this point, the Gamecocks are going to be the number one overall seed. That would be an absolute stunner if it was not the case come Selection Sunday. But at this point, I think what we're all looking for is who could the Gamecocks wind up going up against? Because obviously they're not going to lose in the first round. They're probably not going to lose in the second round. So Sweet 16 Elite 8 heading into the Final Four, that is when Gamecock fans are going to start paying a lot more attention. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go through the number two seed line all the way through the number five seed line in ESPN Bracketologist Charlie Cream's latest term projection, and I'm going to tell you which team South Carolina should want to play on each of those seed lines should they wind up matching up against a team on that seed line in the NCAA tournament. So, Let's start off with the number two seed line. And the way I'm going to read this is the highest seeded team to the lowest seeded team on this line. On this line, we have LSU, UCLA, Texas, and Ohio State. In my opinion, the team that South Carolina would want to play from the number two seed line would be Ohio State. And that is the team that is currently projected to be in South Carolina's regional in the NCAA tournament. Now, one of the reasons why I think South Carolina would want to play Ohio State is because there is an unfamiliarity there. And I think that that would be a good thing for South Carolina. I think if you're a Gamecock fan, a reason why you would maybe be more concerned about this team dropping game in the tournament would be if they had faced a team already this season, beaten them, but the team was able to make solid enough adjustments to where the second time around, or maybe even the third time around, they would be more prepared to take on the Gamecocks. So for that matter, you wouldn't want to play LSU, in my opinion. Texas has Vic Schaefer, who has always done a great job coaching against Don Staley in head-to-head matchups. UCLA has got Lauren Betts, I want to say, is her name, number 51. She is one of the few front court players in the country that could probably match up mano a mano with Camila Cardoso on the low block. So you throw all that in there as well. Once again, you would want to play Ohio State off of this seed line. Also, Ohio State, they only run a six-person rotation based on the stats that they have. Only one player in that rotation is taller than six foot one. So, yeah, I think the Gamecocks front court would have a massive advantage in that potential hypothetical matchup. And, again, the Buckeyes just don't have the depth to keep up. Now, moving on to the number three seed line. You have UConn, Notre Dame, NC State, and Oregon State. In my opinion, the team that South Carolina would want to play from this seed line, should it wind up happening, would be Oregon State. Again, another team that's currently projected to play in South Carolina's regional. Couple reasons here. 
Oregon State has a very small quantity of scoring threats, legit scoring threats on their roster. There are only three players that average more than 6.7 points per game. If you want to beat South Carolina, you've got to have multiple people that they have to worry about on the defensive end of the floor. And the Beavers just don't have that. And the other thing is, the top scorers on their team are pretty inexperienced. They are either sophomores or juniors, and they also have not played in the postseason since 2021, which was three years ago. So their primary contributors have not been in the NCAA tournament, assuming that they've been with Oregon State for their entire college career to this point. So from the number three seed line, you would want to play a team like Oregon State. Then moving on to the number four seed line, you have teams like Gonzaga, Colorado, Indiana, and Virginia Tech. Out of all those teams, I think South Carolina would want to play the Indiana Hoosiers. Couple reasons. One, the Hoosiers do not have a dominant rebounder. Nobody on the team averages more than seven rebounds per game. Not even Mackenzie Holmes, who came back from one more year to try and avenge what was an upset loss, I believe, against the Miami Hurricanes in the second round of the NCAA tournament this past spring. Also, Indiana has very little offensive production that comes from their bench. Nobody on the bench averages more than 4.4 points per game. The only team that can get away with having that kind of roster makeup and actually contend with South Carolina is the LSU Tigers because of all the sheer star power that they have in their starting five. Indiana, obviously, does not have the same kind of star power. Sure, they got a couple of solid players. Again, Mackenzie Holmes obviously being the most notable player, but... I just don't think that they would stand a very good chance of beating the Gamecocks because of what I've already just mentioned. And then moving on to the number five seed line, the last seed line that we're going to talk about here. You got Kansas State, Oklahoma, Syracuse, and Utah. Utah, as of right now, would be the team in South Carolina's regional. I certainly don't think you would want to face Utah. Utah is a team that's got some speed along with some perimeter shooting and also some Highly experienced players, um, Elisa Peely, she has already pl- she's played and matched up with Camila Cardoso and did a pretty good job, admittedly, against South Carolina's senior center. So I think out of this group, you would want to play Syracuse for the simple fact that the Orange only have one perimeter shooter on the entire squad, and that is Daisha Fair, who currently is shooting. from behind the arc on 282 attempts. Outside of her, there's not really any other perimeter threats on that team. And again, if you want to beat South Carolina, not only do you need multiple scores, but you also need diverse ways that you can get points. You can't just try to drive to the basket every time or just shoot threes all the time. You got to have some versatility there. Syracuse does not have that. And so I think if South Carolina were to, were to play them, excuse me, then they would be able to lock down Syracuse, quite frankly, when they are on the offensive end. So again, Number two seed line to number five seed line, I think South Carolina would really like being able to play teams like Ohio State, Oregon State, Indiana, and Syracuse. It does not matter necessarily what the ranking is or their final record. What matters is the matchups, and I think that those matchups all favor the Gamecocks in terms of looking for a good path towards the final four in the NCAA tournament. Now, Speaking of tournament, the men's basketball team is currently going through the SEC tournament up in Nashville, and they got a good win against Arkansas on Thursday. That also came with some good news about Lamont Paris and his future at South Carolina. And at the end of the night, just decided, you know, why not give us more good news as one of South Carolina's best players will be coming back next season. We'll discuss who that is and why it's going to have a huge impact on this team in just a couple moments right here on Locked on Gamecocks. 
Today's show is brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you could still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Today's show is also brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is the destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, whether it's March Madness, the NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. Welcome back to this Friday edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your South Carolina Gamecocks every single day. And as always... A big thank you to each and every one of you everydayers who make the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your first listen wherever you get your audio podcast daily or your first watch on YouTube. South Carolina got a ton of good news on Thursday. It all started with Lamont Paris reportedly agreeing to a new contract with the school, which, by the way, is still pending approval from the Board of Trustees as of the time of this show coming out. Then the Gamecocks defeated the Arkansas Razorbacks in the second round of the SEC tournament. They'll be playing Auburn later today, and we'll be talking about that game in just a little bit. And then the day ended with some great news as Colin Murray Boyles, South Carolina's freshman star forward will be coming back this next season. And his return is going to give Lamont Paris and South Carolina's men's basketball team a massive building block for this roster next year. Now, I want to just go ahead and say this was reported by the state's Jordan K, giving him credit for that story and breaking all that. Um, and Collins' return is going to be huge, not just because of his individual skill set, which we'll touch on more in a moment, but more so because of the players that South Carolina is going to lose or are going to lose and also could lose. For example, B.J. Mack, he has no eligibility left after this season. He is going to be gone. Same with Taylon Cooper. Michi Johnson could declare for the NBA draft. He seemed to kind of flirt with the idea a little bit last year. He went through the NBA Combine and a couple of games uh, during that entire part of the offseason. He wound up coming back. You know, I would say it's unlikely that Johnson comes back again. That's just my personal gut feeling. But who knows? Michi could feel like that he's left a little bit on the table and maybe he wants to return for one last season in Columbia. And then I've got Miles Studi listed here because I'm just going to assume that Miles would want to start. And I don't know if he's going to get that at this point, South Carolina. I don't think it's really because of him. I think it's just because Lamont Paris wants to see Zachary Davis take that next step. And Davis, obviously, he's got the defensive skills. He just needs to develop a little bit more on the offensive end. But Davis has been the primary starter at that wing spot for a good while now for this basketball team. So 
I'm going to assume as of today, Miles Steve would probably transfer. Again, I have nothing to go off of with that other than my own gut feeling. But obviously, we all know what the transfer portal has done to these teams over the past couple years. So you never know what could happen in that regard. My point here is this. With all those guys likely gone or potentially gone, there will not be much playmaking ability left on this roster. But with Kyle Murray Boyles coming back now for the 2024-25 season, that changes all of that. Because Kyle Murray Boyles possesses several traits that you want in a modern basketball player, particularly a guy in the front court. First of all, Kyle Murray Boyles is a very explosive athlete. He has a lot of quick twitch in terms of his movements, especially on the defensive end. It's pretty easy to see that. And that helps to make up for his quote unquote lack of size because he is six foot seven, 230 pounds, playing that four spot in South Carolina's lineup. And, you know, you do see six foot eight, six foot nine guys that do play the four in the NBA. But again, you know, usually you want guys that are a little bit bigger than Kyle Murray Boyles is admittedly right now. But because of how explosive of an athlete he is, it helps make up for that in that regard, along with the fact that. Colin Murray Boyles has a high motor. He is a guy that expends all of his energy when he's out there on the floor. He gets after it. He fights like heck to get loose balls, get rebounds on both ends of the floor. And so it makes him a massive problem for other front courts to have to deal with because, you know, sure, he might not get every single ball, obviously, that he goes after, but you're going to feel his presence every single possession. And then the last thing that I want to bring up real quick, and this was really on display in the Gamecocks win over the Razorbacks in the second round of the SEC tournament on Thursday afternoon. Kyler Murray Boyle's touch on his shot, it's just on another level. The ball leaves his hands differently than it does for most other forwards in college basketball. He can shoot the ball with touch with his right hand and his left hand going both ways. I mean, it is just remarkable. And in all the years that I've watched men's basketball at South Carolina, and that goes all the way back to like 2008, I can't really recall a single player like Colin Murray Boyles who played in the front court that had this combination of athletic traits and skills. For his position. So, why is this a big deal for Lamont Paris specifically? Well, Lamont now is going to have somebody on the offensive end and the defensive end that he's going to be able to consistently rely on. A solid two-way player at that four spot. The other thing is this. With Lamont Paris potentially losing a lot of key players after this season is over. And obviously for Gamecock fans, you're going to hope that that does not have to be addressed for a good while longer, but at some point, you know, you are going to get to the off season and Lamont Paris is going to have to figure out how do I keep this train moving in the right direction with all the losses that I'm going to likely have. Having Colin Murray Boyles on this roster gives you something to point to now for guys that might be grad transfers or they're seniors and they've got one year of eligibility left and they ask you, why should I come here? Besides the fact you did so well last year, give me a good reason why I should spend my last year here. Lamont Paris can now just simply point to number 30 and say, uh, because we've got a future first round draft pick as long as things go well for him health wise, that's already on our roster. And he's going to help you. He's going to be in the front court. He'll draw attention, especially if you're a guard. And that's going to open things up for you on the offensive end. Oh, and I'm going to let you do whatever you want offensively as well, as long as you'll play defense for me. Who would not want that? So you've got something now to use as a recruiting pitch because you've got Colin Murray Boyles coming back. And if you're a South Carolina fan, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Your hope is this. Colin comes back. He dominates, he somehow adds to his arsenal that he already possesses, and he does so well that he has to go on to the NBA after his sophomore season. Let's be honest, folks. Um, If he did not get mono to start the year, there would probably be a better chance, a higher likelihood, 
that he would be drafted in the first round in this year's NBA draft and he would be leaving. But it seems like that Colin feels like that he can get better. And obviously, it doesn't hurt that it is basically the hometown school that he is playing for at the same time. And his family can see him play every single game. So... Big, big, big deal for Lamont Paris and this program to have Kyler Murray Boyles coming back to this team for next season. Now, mentioned a couple of times at this point, South Carolina, they will be taking on the Auburn Tigers later this afternoon. And obviously, the Gamecocks are going to be looking to avenge what was a dreadful beatdown in Neville Arena earlier this season. What do they have to do to make this game more interesting and give themselves a legit shot to win? I'll discuss that in a couple moments right here on Locked On Gamecocks. Today's show and this week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. We're going to continue to stick with the South Carolina Gamecocks, who basically played like a Nissan Rogue on the court on Thursday afternoon against the Arkansas Razorbacks, pretty much just mowing them down in the second half and wearing them out and imposing their will on them. And with that win, by the way, they have now tied the school record for most wins in an individual season in program history. They say when life go rogue. And that's exactly what the Gamecocks have done here. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Welcome back to today's edition of the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your team every single day in just 30 minutes. Okay. So let's talk about South Carolina's impending matchup with the Auburn Tigers that's going to take place later this afternoon. Now, obviously, a lot of analysts and pundits are probably going to simply pick Auburn in this game because of the fact that the Tigers beat the Gamecocks by 40 points. The one time both these teams matched up with each other in the regular season. I have to admit myself, you can't really blame people for having that kind of logic behind their pick. So... The question you all might be wondering is how can South Carolina be more competitive in this game and what can they do to give themselves a legit shot to win? Well, first thing that has to happen is this. Uh, South Carolina cannot let Auburn shoot the ball at will like they did back on Valentine's Day. And part of that was not really South Carolina's fault. Obviously, it was a road game as Gamecock fans all found out that night um, playing in the jungle over in Auburn, Alabama, it is a legit thing. It is a really tough home environment to play in if you're a road team. And uh, Auburn, they feed off the energy of a home crowd, and they certainly did on that night to the fullest extent. Here are some of the shooting percentages that they had from different areas of the floor. 61% from the floor in general, 60% from behind the three-point line, and 89% from behind the free throw line, or at the free throw line, I should say. So, point here is this. Auburn basically beat South Carolina defensively in every which way that they wanted to. Now, do I think that that's going to happen twice? Um, I don't think so. There have been very few teams that have basically done whatever they've wanted to South Carolina's defense this season. The only other team that you could say really forced South Carolina's defense to have to change up a lot of the things they were doing is probably the Florida Gators when the Gamecocks beat them in the second to last week of the regular season. So what do the Gamecocks have to do to change everything in the matchup this time around. Well, I think what's going to have to happen is this. You have got to account for Janai Broom and Jalen Williams. I don't think that those two guys are going to shoot a combined 9 of 12 from behind the three-point line like they did back on Valentine's Day, but both of those guys made it pretty clear. Um, they can stretch the floor, and you have to account for basically wherever they go. For B.J. Mack and Kyle Murray Boyles, a Josh Gray, 
uh, a Miles Studer, Zachary Davis. If it's a smaller lineup and they're playing the four, you've got to make sure you don't lose track of those guys. And with Janai Broom, obviously, he's about six foot nine. He's experienced. He plays aggressive. He can attack the rim and, again, shoot the ball from behind the three-point line. It's all got to start with those guys. If you let those two guys get whatever they want again in this game, it's not really going to matter what else you do, in my opinion, in this matchup. Now, if you can slow those guys down enough, put more pressure on Auburn's guards, if there's one thing that Tiger fans and Tiger pundits like Zach Blackerby, the host of the Lockdown Auburn podcast, seem to point to with this team that's a bit of maybe a concern, it's the fact that their guards are not always consistent. They have some games where their guards show up in a massive way, and they have other games where their guard play kind of just disappears and doesn't make much of an impact maybe on either end of the floor. And for South Carolina... If you're able to make it that kind of game where it comes down to the guard play, you've got to like your chances in this game. Because, again, look, we all know what happened the last time around. But that was in Auburn. That was over a month ago now to this point. You're now playing on a neutral floor. Both of these teams fighting to survive and advance in the SEC tournament. And you've got Taylon Cooper and Michi Johnson as your two guards, along with Zachary Davis at the wing spot. I think you got to like your chances in about 95, 98% of the games that you play when you have those three guys as your first line of defense. So, it's got to start with the front court. Kyler Murray Boyles, you played really well this past time around, but you're going to have to bring it more on the defensive end B.J. Mack, same deal with him. And again, the thing with B.J. is this. I think that it's going to be important to keep the team in this game from a point margin standpoint for a guy like B.J. Mack. Because as I've talked about before, B.J. Mack is a guy that does a bunch of things. Obviously, he battles and spars down low with guys in the front court on the low block. But he also is a guy that will stretch the floor offensively, run out to the perimeter, try to work some slip screens, and get himself open for three. Because of that, he's going to expend energy a lot faster, especially when you consider the fact that this will be the Gamecocks' second game in about 24 hours or so. I think that could actually help them at the beginning because their legs are going to be fresh. Auburn's going to be a bit rusty coming off of six days of rest where they have not played any basketball, at least organized basketball. That can help you early. If you can jump out ahead of the Tigers and put the pressure on them late in the first half at the start of the second half, you got a legit shot here. But along with trying to contain the Tigers' front court, if you start off slow and the Tigers grab the early momentum, then it might just snowball once again like it did this past time. Not in a 40-point beatdown, but you know, in a game where the Tigers might pull away here. So, South Carolina, you got to accomplish a couple different goals if you want to defeat Auburn and move on to the semifinals and play the winner of the Tennessee-Mississippi State game that takes place before your matchup against the Auburn Tigers. So, with that being said, that's going to do it for today's edition of the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast. I hope y'all thoroughly enjoyed today's show, as always. What are y'all's thoughts on South Carolina's women's basketball team and who they could play in the tournament. Who do you want to see them play in their regional? What are your thoughts on Colin Murray Boyles coming back for next season from the men's basketball team? And what that could do for Lamont Paris in terms of strategy or recruiting in the transfer portal? And lastly, do you think South Carolina can get revenge against the Auburn Tigers later this afternoon in Nashville? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section if you watch today's show on YouTube or you could shoot me a direct message on X at a line underscore SC if you listen to today's show on an audio podcast app. As always, thank you all so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your Friday and a fantastic weekend. And by the way, I'll be sure to hop on here on Selection Sunday. It's going to be a great day for Gamecock basketball fans. Women's team will be number one overall seed, again, more than likely. And the men's team, depending on what they do the next couple of days, who knows? They could be a number four seed by the time the selection show happens on Sunday afternoon. So be sure to stay tuned in for all of that. I'll give you all my announcements on socials and everything when I figure out my final plans for all of that. Now, with that being said, have a great rest of your weekend. I'll be sure to catch you all on the next show of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast.